Hey everyone, welcome to another custom action figure video showcase. Today I'll show you a range of some quick custom tricks to improve any figure, all the way to a full blown custom like what I have here. This would make my second Elgidor custom, but these customs are more like complete overhauls rather than upgrades. Just like the first Elgidor custom, I wanted this guy to be fully articulated, full of good paint apps, packed with accessories, and even given some new weaponry along the way. I pretty much had the same exact thoughts as I did with the first one. This is a beautiful design with some accents, yet in completely different scale, and with little to no movement. So first part of the plan was to find the desirable base body. I wanted something large and intimidating, and I wanted him to work in both 6 and 7 inch scale, so I figured I should start hunting for a decently priced Marvel Legends Build-A-Figure, probably. I just didn't know which one. I happened to be passing by one of my favorite local spots a few days later, and I hit up the glass case. I wasn't sure until I saw Cull Obsidian. That's when I knew I found my base body. This Cull Obsidian was a treat to work with because he starts out with pretty modern articulation. He was the exact size I wanted, and I couldn't have picked a better base color. For those of you that have made customs before, I'm sure you know how troublesome it could be to paint from red to blue or from black to white. It really helps if the base plastic is your desired color scheme, because then paint rub and additional coats of paint become way less of a worry. On to the amalgamation. I stripped Cole Obsidian of most of his artificial wear, like his armored shoulder pauldron, the shin guards, and torso wear. It was important that this character retained an organic and natural aesthetic. Most pieces were removed easily with heat and blades, but I did run into a little trouble with the loose left leg on the Build-A-Figure, and the thickness of the hard plastic of the original Eldrador body. Yeah, I probably spent twice the amount of time shaving away plastic with the rotary tool than I thought I would have to. But that's all part of the process. I loved what the original designer did here with this vine-like head, the wood-like chest, the giant shield. I even made sure to save some of those smaller yellow spikes. Once he was assembled, I wanted to work on the giant shield of his and give it a feel as his primary and most dangerous weapon. With hot glue designed to look like roots and a couple of pieces of balloon sticks, I was able to create what appears to be two sharp and powerful prongs. This process worked out so well, I decided to further accessorize the character with more balloon sticks to mimic organic spikes, and I laced hot glue over the whole body to mimic tree root-like appearances from head to toe. Wondering if the shield was enough in terms of weaponry, I thought of how cool it would be if this character could manipulate parts of his body to use as tendrils, similar to Groot when he forges Stormbreaker or, or when he shakes down that one thug in the prison from the first movie. So I found a tree-like weapon in the fodder bin, shaved it down, and tossed it in the bin for the next step. Paint. I used a Tamiya red-brown for a nice flat brown base coat. I ran through my Tamiya bin and found a gorgeous candy apple green. Might have been candy lime green, but yeah. Using zenith point painting techniques, I gave the top of the figure a gorgeous coat of a metallic light green, which comes off so well, especially in the sunlight. I wanted the look to resemble real plant life, where you could get beautiful, vibrant colors up top. The balancing act is like a lackluster stem or root. I finished the custom up by hand painting the other browns, the yellow, and touching up pieces here and there. I covered him in Mr. Super Clear matte finish to tie it all together, and there is my Eldrador Jungle Emperor. I think from this point on, I'd rather call him something else. I don't sense much of an Emperor vibe from this guy. He definitely seems more like a loner that wants you to get off his lawn. The Dweller of the Jungle seems more fitting as I picture him, surrounded by a jungle habitat, away from humans, and aloof from everything outside of his little world. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope you were entertained. Feel free to write any questions, thoughts, or concerns in the comments section below, and have a great day, guys. Quick Figure Tricks out.